Hi there, and welcome to part two of my tutorial for making props and characters for GoAnimate using cool moves. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to trace your characters, uh, how to, I'm, I'm going to do an overview of the drawing tools. And I'm going to show you how to animate your first character. As you can see, I've got our template open that we made in part one. And to get started, you simply click on your movie clip that you set up here. You can either double click on it or select the properties palette. And then select frames and that will take you inside the movie clip. The first thing you want to do is get rid of everything in your movie clip because that's just a placeholder. So we'll select it and hit the delete key. Now the good thing about cool moves is that you don't need to draw or need to know how to draw because you can trace almost any image and turn it into a prop or a character. And in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is import your image that you're going to trace. So you go into the File menu, select Trace Image, and then Display Image. And that will allow you to select whatever image you want to trace. Now notice that your image has to be in Windows BMP format in Cool Moves. It Cool moves will not accept any other format. So here we have the image that I'm going to trace, and I'm going to be making this character here, who's one of my own original characters called Detective Duck. So when it comes to tracing your characters in Cool Moves, um, Cool Moves has a particular bug in that you need to select a magnification resolution you can see the detail in your character on. I've just select two times there. It's a good one for characters. And then for the whole time you're tracing it, you will need to stay in that magnification. Because if you change the magnification, uh, the lines that you draw will no longer line up with the image that you're tracing. I'll show you that quickly just by quickly doing a rough tracing like this. This is just a temporary one to show you what I'm talking about. So you see I've traced the hat there and if I now go into back to one times magnification you can see here what I've traced is down here and the hat is over there. It's not much use to you. Fortunately, if you just go back to the magnification that you're in, you see it's all back and lying, lined up again. So, but just be aware of that. I'll just get rid of that. The next thing I'm going to do is give you a quick overview of the drawing tools. I'm not going to go over every single one of them, but I'm going to show you the main ones that I think you will need. Over in the tool palette, the drawing tools that you're most likely to use are the line tool and this tool here which if you click and hold the button down you'll see has actually two tools in it. This is the draw a closed object tool and this is like a closed filled object and this is the draw an open filled object tool. And you'll probably be using both of those quite a bit. Other tools that you might use are this one, the circle tool. And if you hold that down, you'll see there's a whole different bunch of shapes you can draw. There's a circle, and there's ellipse, the square, rectangle, rounded rectangle, star, and polygon. Down here, there's what's called the freehand tools. 
and I would suggest that you don't use these tools at all. Let's draw a closed freehand tool. Let's draw a freehand line. The reason why you don't want to use these two tools is because they create a lot more points than you actually need and they will make your drawings unnecessarily complex. And just to demonstrate that, I'm going to select the line tool and then I'm going to attempt to trace a curve around my hat on Detective Duck like so. What you'll see is all those purple dots there are points that make up this line. Now if I draw this same line with the line tool, I can click once here and click once, say about there, I click and hold the button down, I can drag out a curve and you'll see a bit of trial and error, I can get pretty close to that. And then I do one more here and double click to end my curve. And you see that it's not quite what I want so if I go these tools here this one will let you add a point into a line and this one will remove any selected points that you have. If I want to add in another point so I select that, go to where I want to add it on the line, and click once. You'll see now we've got another line in, or another point. You'll see that messed up my curve. But you can see here, if I use this tool, which is the Edit Points tool, and you'll see there's a little round point there, you notice how the cursor changes from a black arrow to a white arrow when I'm over a point. If I click once to select that, that'll let me adjust the curve on this side of the point. And if I click once now on the point, I can also move that over. Now we want to adjust this line and make it curve. This tool here is the tool for changing a straight line into a curved line, so I'll select that. And how that works, as you'll see, the cursor at the moment is a dark arrow. If I put it over a line that's not already a curve, you'll see it change to a white arrow. Now if I click and drag on that, it'll turn into a curve. and let go. You'll see we've just drawn that line. You can see that's a much more efficient way of drawing than using these two freehand tools. So other things that you'll need to know is the settings of the various tools. So any of these tools that I select such as the drawing a closed shape tool. You'll see down here different settings come up for that tool. The first setting is the fill color for that tool and if I want to change that I just click on it and the color palette comes up. I can change that just by selecting the color. Going OK, and you see that's now green. The second box is the color of the line on your tool. And this last one lets you change the thickness of the line. You see now if I draw a box with that tool, it's green with a thickness, line thickness of 2, and a black outline. 
So if I just clear everything that I've done so far, I'll show you one other nice feature, which is if you don't want to have the same thickness of line in your drawing all the way through, uh, the line tool will let you draw lines that look more hand drawn with like various thicknesses of line. So if I draw a line like so and then select the properties palette. I can select, you can see here, a line style. At the moment it has none. But if I select that up with this box and I can have a line that's tapered at both ends, tapered at one end or tapered at the other end and tapered just means going to a point. Before I can actually demonstrate that I need to change the thickness of my line so you go into the line width of this line will make it five pixels thick and you see that's much thicker. Now if I go into the line style and do tapered at both ends and then make the widest point the width of my line which was five then go OK. You'll see now this line here is thick along there now goes down into a thin section there and then it goes back into a thick line again so if you want if you don't want to have the same even width lines then this is how you go about getting different thicknesses of line okay so i think that pretty much covers all the drawing tools you may have noticed that I've been using these two tools throughout. Uh, this one is the Select Object tool. So you just use that tool and click on the object that you want to select. And this tool here is the Edit Points tool. But if you click and hold that down, you'll notice there's two tools in there. This one is for moving bone joints around and we'll get onto creating bones for characters in a later tutorial. For now, you'll just be using this one which is the select move and shape point tool. You can see all that does is allows you to select a point and move it around or select the curve adjustment points to modify your curves. So that now you've had a pretty much basic overview of all the important tools that you're going to be using, we'll get back to creating our character.